Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? What do you see? What do you see? A star. Praise God. You see a star. That was good. I didn't even know it was there. That's good. You see a star. When you wish. No, we're not going to go there. We're going to stick with do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Let me ask you a question today. What do you see? What do you see? The truth is when it comes to Christmas, you know as well as I do, when it comes to God, when it comes to Jesus, when it comes to the things of the Spirit, everyone sees something a little different. Most people are seeing something a little different. And it's like, and it's like I wish we could all see the same thing, but you know as well as I do, we don't always see the same thing. When it comes to Christmas, Christmas is a really interesting time of year because I would think this would be the time of year where we all saw the same thing, but it's actually not a year where we see the same thing. We all see different things, but I'm hoping today that along the way we might get to a place where we can all see the same thing. This is why the three magi, when they came, when the three wise men, when they came to Jerusalem, when they came in search, how many of you know, they came in search of something, they could see something that no one else was seeing. That's why when they turned up, how many of you know there was only three who came? Everybody would have been able to see, but nobody saw what they saw. We want to be a people who see what we need to see. We want to be a people who see in the Spirit. We want to be a people who see what God would want to reveal to us, that we might live the life that He has for us. They came because they saw something in the sky that most people didn't see. Now, what I liked straight away is when I said, what do you see? Straight away, we've got some people saying, a star. Praise God. How many of you know you saw a star? Some people didn't see the star. Even in here today, some people didn't see the star. Although it was obvious for some, it wasn't obvious for others. In, in the day when Jesus was born, it was obvious for the three, but not necessarily obvious for everyone else. Now, what you're going to think is, as I begin to speak this morning, is you're going to think that Pastor Mick and I, we shared scriptures and shared notes so that we'd land at the same place. I promise you, to my knowledge, we haven't shared anything this week. As in, I think we had a coffee on Tuesday, but other than that, we haven't shared anything. We haven't shared scriptures. We haven't shared ideas. Pastor Mick was going to turn up, do what he had to do today. I'm going to turn up, do what I'm going to do today. But how many of you know when God begins to move, when God begins to breathe, when God begins to orchestrate, then all of a sudden you can see the hand of God in the message and it's like, man, maybe God is trying to tell us something. Matthew chapter 2, reading from verse 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? <laughs> this is awesome. I don't know whether this is like a really good church or a scene out of Gremlins. How many of you remember this? Anyway, moving right along. It's a great Christmas movie. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to the children, but it's a great Christmas movie. I, I love it. Do you see what I see? You're like, how long are we going to do this for? All day if you don't get louder. It's like Christmas lunch, forget it. <laughs> Praise God. Do you see what I see? What do you see? What do you see? When the Magi came from the east, they didn't just come because they saw a star. No, 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 no. It wasn't just a star that they saw, but they saw his star. That's what the Scripture says. When they saw his star, they came and they worshipped him. They came because they understood that this was the star that represents the one, the one who's going to be born, the king of the Jews, which is exactly why when they turned up, when they arrived, they asked, where is he, the one who's born king of the Jews? And initially they didn't know. They're like, what are you talking about? We don't get it. As in, because they saw something that nobody else was saying, seeing. So this is what it means in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 21. This is what it means here. Now hear this, O oh foolish and senseless people. That wouldn't be you. That's another group of people, all right? But, you know, okay, so we're just going to go here. Listen to it. Now hear this. Everyone say, hear this. Yes. All right. O oh foolish and senseless people who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear. How is it that some people see and some people don't? Some people hear and some people don't. They can see, but they're never seeing. They can hear, but they're never hearing. 
How many of you know it's like, we want to be a people who see and hear what is happening in the Spirit. The three Magi, they came because they could see something that nobody else was seeing. We want to be those people. Praise God, most of us today here have sight. But I want to ask you today, even though you have sight, what do you see? What do you see? The three Magi saw something that caused them to do something. That's what Pastor Mick was speaking about today. The three Magi saw something that caused them to do something. This is what I know about people who see, they do. Because they see and they perceive. A lot of people see nothing, therefore do nothing. But we are not those people. We are people who see and therefore we do. When they saw his star rise, they went to where he was because seeing his star, upon seeing his star, they realised that, and they saw what most people didn't see, that this light, because how many of you know that's what it is at the end of the day? It's a light. The star is like the sun. It's like, it's just a long way away. But when they saw his light begin to rise above the, above the earth, they knew, here it comes. It's time now. The one who is going to be born, the King of the Jews, he is about to arrive. And so they begin to set out straight away. Friends, I want to encourage you today. You need to understand the times. You need to understand the times in which we live. You need to see what is happening in the Spirit that you might be responding and respond in a way that shows that you actually see. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Oh, you, you do way better than me. Praise God. We can start a choir. Praise God. The Enjoy Christian Choir. Oh, hallelujah, I sounded very godly. Do you see what I see? You see, Christmas is a time each year where his star rises. Every, every year, Christmas is a time where his star rises. There are parts of the church today, and maybe if you are in this category, then, and if we've offended you, I'm sorry, but there are parts of church today that won't, have Christmas trees, they, they won't have any Christmas celebration, they're just not going to go there. They're like, it's pagan worship, pagan, pagans, you're all pagans. And I'm like, I'm not a pagan, I'm a Richmond supporter. And it's like, and it's like I'm not a pagan. And it's like, but here is the thing, as in, for me personally, it's a tree, it's got lights on it, I don't care about it. What it is, it's his star rising. For me, when I celebrate Christmas, I will, if I can celebrate Christmas every week, in fact, I should, which we should. Maybe that would get people to come to church to hear the gospel. Because at the end of the day, this tree, for me, I don't care for trees. You know what I'm saying? I'm a carpenter. I like chopping them down and making stuff out of trees. You know what I'm saying? So, sorry, just lost 10 people. Uh, but but I'm, I, don't, I don't care for Christmas trees. If you, were to, if you were to leave the Christmas tree decorations to me in the Baxter house, how many times in 32 years, Georgie, have I put up the Christmas tree? Zero. Like I said, I like chopping them down, whatever. As in, for me, but in church, I'll put up a tree. I'll, I'll, we'll do Christmas because it allows us to see his star rising. His star is rising. Once a year, the whole world, pretty much the whole world, certainly most of the world, it comes to a place where it's like they will celebrate Christmas. That's why we need to take the opportunity to make sure people see what we see, because we don't just see Christmas trees, we don't just see presents. This is a time of year where people see all sorts of things. Uh, how many of you would agree that a lot of people just like going shopping at Christmas time? Praise God. It's like, what's Christmas about? Shopping. It's a, for others, it's a festive season. There's no doubt about that. Celebrations, holidays, holiday, celebrate. Anyway, it was, she was from a long time ago. Uh, uh, holidays, family gatherings, lunches that leave you comatose. You know what I'm saying? How, how many of you have eaten yourself into a coma? Give me a wave if that's you. Where it's like, oh my Lord, as in, at the moment, George, don't read anything into this, because, yeah. but at the moment, George and I are sleeping in different rooms. It's true. Because my shoulder, I'm just trying to, trying to get some sleep. I feel like I haven't slept for eight months. It's been crazy. But last night, Georgie made, oh my Lord, this food. And, and I ate it because that's what husbands do. We are here to serve. And so, so I ate and I ate and I ate. And then from about 12 o'clock, I'm laying in bed downstairs going, ah, indigestion was all over me. And I was like, get off, you filthy spirit. And I was like, you shouldn't eat so much, you guts. And I was like, I was like, oh. 
But for a lot of us, Christmas time, that's what we do. We just eat and eat and eat and whoa. And then we wake up four days later. And I was like, what the heck was that about? Friends, if that's all you see at Christmas, if that is all that Christmas is to you, then you're not seeing what I see. If that's all that Christmas is to you, you're not seeing what the Magi saw. For me, Christmas each and every year is a time where His star rises above all of the earth. The light of the world is to be worshipped and praised and celebrated and given glory and given honour that the wise men, the Magi, the great people on planet Earth would come to His throne and worship Him and worship Him and worship Him. This is what Christmas is all about. It's a time where the star rises to draw all men unto Himself. All men. That's what I love about the Gospel. It is for every person, every man, every woman, every person on planet Earth. The Gospel is free and it's here for us all. The light of the world rises every year. And what I love about it is the world doesn't even know it lifts up Jesus. They just think they're lifting up decorations. They're lifting up stars. And I'm like, thank you for that decoration. It gives me an opportunity. As in never let an opportunity go by. As in all the time, look for the opportunity to say, yeah, point to the star, point to Jesus. It's His star. He is the light of the world. Nobody else. He is the light of the world. And, and the good thing is this, in the midst of it all, we do get to enjoy the trimmings. Trimmings. As in this afternoon, as it happens most years, we'll go to Mick and Wendy's and we're going to partake of the trimmings. Praise ye the Lord. As in, as in, I don't know about you, I like dead pigs. You know what I'm saying? More ham. Yes, please, Wendy, More ham. Oh my Lord. As in, this is going to be day three of coma. You know what I'm saying? It's, a, you know, it's good. I enjoy that and I enjoy the gifts. Georgie bought me a lovely gift that I wasn't ready for. And my kids bought me gifts. And it's like, it's like and I'm going to be your grandfather. Some of you have been saying today. And yes, it's, yes, it was me. I did it. Yes. Yes. Well, I, we gave birth to Emily and now Rio's come along. I like that kid. I like that kid. Now, I'm going to stop right there because I'm going to get myself in trouble. As in, it's just beautiful, isn't it? It's like family. I love family. I love the celebrations. I love all of that. I love all of the trimmings. But I know at the centre of it all, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus is the centre. It's all about Jesus. It's about His light and His glory. Christmas is about the birth of Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who would take upon himself the sins of the world. Do you see what I see? For what I see was planned from before the beginning of time. But what I see was prophesied throughout the ages all the way up until the right time. What I see is the fulfilment, the fulfilment of time, the fullness of time came and in that moment, Jesus was born. Jesus was born. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 says this, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called what? Wonderful. If you don't know Jesus today, can I encourage you? He's altogether wonderful. He is altogether wonderful. I, I love it. His name will be Counselor. He's an incredible counsellor. I don't know about you, throughout this year, there's been times where I'm, I'm done. I don't know what to do. But he's our counsellor that will come alongside of us and comfort us, counsel us. His name will be Mighty God. He's a mighty God. I want to encourage you, friends. I don't know what you're going through today, but your God is mightier than whatever you're facing. Your God is mightier than whatever sickness you're facing. Your God is mightier than whatever relational thing is happening, financial thing is happening. Your God is a mighty God. He's an everlasting Father. He's not there today and gone tomorrow, but He is here alongside all the time forevermore. And He is the Prince of Peace. This is our God. This is our Lord. This is our Saviour. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God with us. What is the star all about? God with us. Some people see God with us. Some people miss it altogether. I want to encourage you today, don't miss it. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Do you, you, you realise? I can tell what you see. You're like, say what? 
I can tell what you see. And you can tell what I see. I can tell what you see, and you can tell what I see. And you're like, how does that work? Some of you are like, really? How does this work? Well, it's really simple when you think about it. But just as we can tell what the Magi could see from what they did, so, too, what we do reveals what we see. We, we knew the Magi. They saw something that no one else saw. And as a result, they did what no one else did. When we, and we're not to judge each other, but the reality is this. We can observe the way, each, the way we do life. And you can tell that I've seen something because of the way I live. And I can tell those who have seen something by the way they live. That was that case with the Magi, and it's that case with us. For as Christmas comes around, and Jesus star, the light of the world, rises and rises over the earth. Many people enjoy the family festivities and the shopping and the eating until they're comatose and the celebrations and the holidays and all the rest of that. But those who see what I see, those who see what the Magi see, they come to worship. Worship. And it's not about all of that. They're the trimmings and praise God for them. But that's not what it's about. It's about coming to worship. They bring their gifts to Him in the knowledge that as they present their lives to Him as living sacrifices, this is the sort of worship that pleases the Lord. You know, Jesus has told us that the Father is seeking people who will worship Him. Worship Him. Worship isn't a service. Worship isn't an occasion. Worship is to be a lifestyle for those who see what the Magi see. This is what it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. A living and holy sacrifice. The kind He will accept. When you think of what He has done for you, is this too much to ask? Do you see what I see? The last verse of this incredible song that was sung so beautifully says this. Said the king to the people everywhere, listen to what I say. Pray for peace, people everywhere. Listen to what I say. The child, the child sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light. I pray. But all of you in this room and everyone watching online today, I pray that you will all see what I see. I pray you would all see what the Magi see. I pray that we would all see a glorious King rising, rising, rising to bring goodness and light. Goodness and light. Now, I believe most of you have got your communion there, either under your seat or have been given communion. If you haven't been and you want some, please raise your hand and someone from our team will run to you now. So I'm just seeing hands go up all across the back there. So if we can have some hosts up the back there helping us at this time, that would be absolutely wonderful. All right, we've got hosts running, running, running. Praise God. Do you see what I see? What do you see? See Jesus. See Jesus. Lord, let us see Jesus. I'm going to ask all the worship team if they can come. I'm going to ask if they could just come back. And I think, you know, after what has been a very tough year, hard year, stepping back into church, worship needs to be central to everything that's happening. We've just got to continue to worship God. Let the hardness break off. Let the disappointment break off. Just get lost in His presence. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to let you all open up your communion packs. It's like a lunch pack, but different. Strange question, but where's the bread? 
in the top. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Where is it? Oh, in the bowl. Oh you, oh, you took it out. It's in the bowl. No wonder I couldn't find it. I'm like, this is like amazing. I don't see bread anywhere. Why don't we stand away our feet, church? This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We shall follow you, Lord, all the days of our life because you've opened our eyes that we might see Jesus. In a moment after we have communion, I'm going to pray for every man, every woman that really wants to see Jesus. You want to give your life to Jesus, I promise you this, He will open your eyes and you will see Him in the most amazing way. If you want Him, you can have Him. If you seek Him, you can find Him. God wants to lead so many of you into something new this year. I just sense it in my spirit. It's like we've been crushed this year, but out of the crushing is going to come new wine, going to come new days, new faith, new life. Father, as we stand here today, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For this bread that represents, Lord God, your body. Thank you, Lord God, Lord, that you gave it for us freely. You came to earth on mission. You were born the King of the Jews. You were a king. You lived as a king. And you're still our king. Thank you, Lord, you gave your body. You allowed it to be broken. You allowed it to be bruised. That we might be healed. That we might have life. In Jesus' name. So Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for the bread that represents all of that and so much more. I thank you, Lord God, for the juice that represents your blood that was shed for each and every one of us. You allowed it to be poured out, flowed freely, Lord God, for all mankind. But Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that you opened our eyes that we might see the reality of this. Not just know it as a story, but know you as our Saviour. We thank you, Lord, your body was broken. Thank you, Lord, your blood was spilt, that we might have life and have it to the full. I thank you, Lord, you've opened our eyes that we might see. So we receive forgiveness today. We ask you, Lord, forgive us of our sins. We receive healing today. We thank you, Lord, that your body was broken, that by your stripes we might be healed. So, Lord, we speak over every man, every woman, healing in this place, healing into your bodies, healing into their bodies, in Jesus' name. Forgiveness, Lord, for those who are feeling condemned, for those that the enemy would condemn. Lord, we break that condemnation off. And I pray as my brothers and sisters partake, Lord God, of this juice today, that they would know that they're healed, they're healed and they're forgiven, Father, in Jesus' name. So we partake freely and we celebrate joyfully in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said together, Amen. Amen. Let's partake, church. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Speak healing. Speak forgiveness. We receive your healing. We receive forgiveness. In Jesus' wonderful name. In Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said together, Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen.